the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Please keep standing. Let me just say one or two things. You see, when we take our time to honor and celebrate people, it is not human worship. I know that here and there you will find exaggerations where it seems as though when you celebrate people, what you are celebrating is the sacrifice of alignment, the painstaking sacrifice to stay with God and follow the blueprint of the Spirit for you and the result that has come out of that obedience that is blessing nations. That's what we celebrate. Are we together now? The Bible says, every house is built by some man, even though God is the builder of all. So you do not celebrate God alone. You also celebrate the obedience, the sacrifice, the alignment of the vessel. And we live in times where it's becoming out of fashion to sincerely honor the sacrifices of people. We trivialize the investments of people through the years and we make it look like after all, they were just favored. After all, they were just anointed. After all, it was just an election of grace. It's a very, very incorrect perception. Whenever God wants to meet Israel, he finds Jacob. Praise the name of the Lord. He took Mary saying, be it unto me for Jesus to come. It was not just the power of the Holy Spirit alone. It was the painstaking cooperation of a woman. She took a part of her life and invested it in sacrifice for salvation to happen. One more time, please honor the angel over this house and his dear wife. Praise the Lord. Just, just by way of, just by way of addition, it may be a culture you want to practice to always honor a man of God and his wife. It is very, it is, it is a display of hypocrisy to celebrate a man of God and there his wife is there and you ignore her or celebrate the woman of God and ignore the husband. No. According to God's word and according to the reality of life, the truth is that behind every man who is successful, there must be a visionary woman who is standing there. We learned this. It is true. Hallelujah. We are students, thank you, we are students of history and we have seen how that from scripture, everything was all right in the palace, in the book of Esther. Everything was all right, but one woman's defiance was about to divide the palace into two. It was not war. It was not the rebellion of the horsemen. One woman, her, her refusal to cooperate and comply with the king was leading to a threat that could divide 127 provinces into two. And so please do not just celebrate a man and ignore his wife. Whether you are aware of the role that she's playing or even if she's not playing a role directly in a general sense, you have to realize that there are many dynamics that play to bring up a grace that blesses. There are people who pray, there are people who cook, there are people who fast without Anna the prophetess, Jesus would not arrive. Without Simeon the prophet, Jesus would not arrive. Without Joseph of Arimathea, the influence to take Jesus to the cross and bring him down would not be there. There were many other auxiliary support systems that helped salvation to happen. So it must be a culture to celebrate not only the center point of greatness, but everything around it. Are we together? I'd like us to also appreciate Reverend Amosu. May God bless you. My God. Amen.
The last time we met, he was a lamb. And on this stage, we saw a lion. Amazing. May the Lord bless you. We honor your ministry, sir. Who is like him? The lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down and every ocean roll to the Lord of Lords. We will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day. of the earth all the angels and the saints sing praise father we have come to receive we have come with hearts open we have come as proof that we trust you we have come acknowledging our limitations we have come as our commitment to grow to rise to thrive to excel and to walk in victory we pray by your spirit that you will help us this morning in addition to all the sessions past, I pray that your word will come with power. Let it come with accuracy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated again. Let me also celebrate every servant of God here. I honor you, appreciate you, and celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yesterday we began to discuss... The subject of faith the Lord placed it in my heart to share with us on the dynamics of Bible faith and to help us understand and engage the principles of faith the faith that works the faith that produces we did define faith yesterday as the action that we take based on our conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word. Yesterday we spoke about two attributes of God that the believer's faith depends upon. Number one, we said his integrity, his quality of consistency, unbendedness. Number two, his ability. Ephesians 3.20, the Bible says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think according to the power that works with us the bible says in hebrews 11 verse 6 that he that comes to god must believe that he exists number one and then number two that he has the power to reward those who diligently seek him praise the name of the lord now this morning very quickly we'll be looking at the keys to producing Bible faith the dynamics of faith number one the first key that is responsible for the manifestation of Bible faith is meditation the power of meditation the power of meditation Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 the Bible says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth. It says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That means it must be a consistent activity. That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. It says, then shall you make your ways prosperous and you shall have good success. Please say meditation. What does it mean to meditate? Meditation has to do with contemplation that you ponder deeply by the Spirit of God. You ponder deeply upon the word spoken. You ponder deeply upon the principles taught. Now, generally speaking, the Bible contains three basic information. Number one, please write it down. The Bible contains promises. The Bible contains promises, number one. Number two, the Bible contains principles the principles of the kingdom. Number three, the Bible contains prophecies. So every time you study the Bible, you are exploring the promises of God, the principles of the kingdom, 
and the prophetic words past present and future that guide our course the bible again i repeat contains promises god's commitment to us the bible contains principles the modus operandi of the kingdom then the bible contains prophecies hallelujah so when you meditate you're opening and exposing your spirit to the light of these three dimensions of the word the promises of god believing for them to be made manifest in your life the principles of the kingdom to culture you towards a life of victory or prophecy giving you hope and giving you direction are we together meditation is very powerful the bible says proverbs 18 and verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself he says he seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom proverbs 18 and verse 1 through desire a man having separated himself so desire draws you to separate yourself and then you meditate upon the word of god now the end of meditation please look up the end of meditation is that you understand the participatory role you have to play in actualizing the promised desire please listen again the end of meditation is that you understand the participatory role that you have to play in actualizing your desire a man of god said every christianity that makes the outcome of your life absolutely dependent on god is an irresponsible christianity there is always a participatory role that we have to play the spirit and the bride say come that's always the formula it's not the spirit alone that tells the word to come it's not the bride alone so when the spirit says be healed there must be the bride that also echoes be healed for healing to come when the spirit says be lifted the bride must also agree it is the spirit and the bride that tells the word to come we have a narrative that in an attempt to describe the sovereign power of god and that sense of exclusivity we have a narrative in many christian circles sadly that makes god absolutely responsible for the outcome of our lives and so we remain victims of situations and circumstances consoled and justified by the narrative that if god wants to bless me he will bless me he has the power to do so if god wants to lift me he will lift me so i if i'm in my current situation it must be that god wants me to be there but the will of god is not in the dark are we together colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 paul was mentoring the church in Colossae, and he began to describe to them his prayers for them that they step into certain dimensions of knowledge the first of it is that they be filled with the knowledge of his will paul wants the church he wants believers to be filled with the knowledge of his will number two he wants believers to be filled with all wisdom all of the dimensions of wisdom because wisdom is dimensional and he wants believers to be filled with all wisdom and then number three with spiritual understanding hallelujah are we together this morning yes the will of god is not a mystery the bible lets us know that the spirit of god is able to search and reveal to the saints the will of the father so meditation is very powerful for instance if you are trusting god to walk in the reality of the blessing you are trusting god to explore and understand the economic system of the kingdom then you begin to contemplate as you meditate the holy spirit now begins to lead you to scriptures that guide you isaiah 51 look unto your father abraham and unto sarah your mother i called him alone and i blessed him that means in god's mind abraham personifies his idea of the blessing so if you want to rise the recommended personality because the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise so you understudy abraham right from genesis chapter 12 when he was called as an idol worshiper from all of the chaldeans the bible says he called him and he began a journey with god that culminated to him being the father of nations he was blessed with all sorts of things so that means that if you study the life of abraham you will find pieces 
of spiritual mysteries that together culminate into the life of blessing you will find principles one scripture leading to another you will come to a point where the bible teaches that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. there is he that withholdeth more than his meat tends to poverty the bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat are we together now it talks about a man who will not sow because of the weather condition and that he will beg in harvest you begin to read scriptures like God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency that you will abound in all good things. Now you put these things together and you now understand your participatory role that number one, it is God's desire for me to walk in the blessing. Number two, that God delights in my prosperity. Let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. The Bible says, Yea, let the Lord be magnified who hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. That's what meditation does. It's not just a blind contemplation. You're reasoning out with God. The Bible says to come, let us reason together. This is what happens in the place of meditation. And I repeat that the end of any meditation is knowing the participatory role that you have to play if in the end of your meditation all you know is what god should do and you do not know the role you have to play something is wrong with that meditation it is inaccurate and it is incomplete if you're with me please say amen meditation is powerful it's interesting to note that almost all religions of the world place profound value on the power of meditation all religions whether it's buddhism whether it's whatever kind of religion they place premium on meditation they understand that there is something about shutting away from the noise from an intellectual standpoint meditation is profitable all wise are we together all leaders all visionary leaders as a rule understand the power of meditation and that when you shut away from all the distractions that life can bring and you are in a position of silence you contemplate intelligently and the spirit of god is able to breathe upon your mind meditation is powerful when i began to walk with the lord not even ministry i didn't place so much emphasis on the power of the mind the excellency of the mind and the role that the mind has to play as far as the excelling of the believer is concerned because my my context did not place an emphasis on that until i began to read books and explore materials by people across the body of christ and then i learned that the holy spirit as mighty as the spirit of the living god is the inability to have a transformed mind can limit his potential in the life of a believer and it made me to pay rapt attention to the mind. The mind is the only authorized gateway that allows both demons and the Holy Spirit to find expression in a believer's life. And so if your mind is unhealthy, there is a problem there. In fact, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says to permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus did not just excel because he was the son of the living God. There was a belief system that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living and walking in Him. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So meditation is very powerful. Unfortunately, we live in a world that is full of distractions from social media to all forms of sociological distractions. And it's no longer fashionable to shut yourself and stay. But this still remains the irrefutable secret of great achievers. They must learn to shut away from all the things that bring noise and stay with God. Meditation is powerful. In fact, here's how the Bible puts it. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. When the oceans roar and thunders, I will soar with you above the storms. Father, you are king over the flood. 
so I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you. Sometimes our environments are too noisy to hear God. Sometimes our environments are too distracted to understand the cause for our lives. There is power in shutting down and just being away. The Bible says, be still and you will know. There is a kind of knowledge that only comes when you are still. Not just be still and you will hear. Be still and you will know. Meditation. Number two, very quickly. We are piecing together the faith equation now. Number two, prayer. Now, I did observe yesterday that this when it has to do with the subject of warfare, deliverance, it has to do with warding of the forces of darkness, and then issues of power and grace. We place emphasis and premium on prayer. But then when it comes to... Where we read yesterday, we start from 22 and down to 24. But 24 is the verse of emphasis. The Bible says, um, how did Jesus put it now? He said, verily, verily, please give it to us. Mark chapter 11, we start from verse 22 down to 24. Jesus answering them said, have faith in God, the faith of God. Next verse, verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed from hence, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible declares that he shall have whatsoever he saith. The rule is in verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when, not if, when, when you pray, Believe that thou receivest them and ye shall have them. Why do you need to pray? There are many reasons why we pray. But prayer is the only authorized platform that gives us an opportunity to make petitions and to make requests before the Lord. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. It says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known don't assume god knows it make your request known hallelujah and so prayer is a very vital part of the faith equation lord i desire you to arise i desire you to move in this area jesus was teaching us how to pray and in his lecture on prayer he says when you pray pray thus our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name thy kingdom come he said thy will be done and then he says give us this day this is request now our daily bread give us today you mention the day and you mention what you desire today our daily bread praise the name of the lord prayer is very powerful prayer also plays a role in building our faith the bible says building our faith our most holy faith even as we pray in the Holy Ghost so prayer is one of the faith equations number three confession the power of confession it comes from the Hebrew word homologio that means repeat as you have heard it comes from the word echo repeat as you have heard are we together now to confess means to declare to verbalize in agreement that which God has said again it means to to verbalize in agreement what God has said it's not just to merely talk that means if you are speaking and what you are saying is not what God said you are just talking but you are not confessing confession has to be in agreement with what God has said if you are complaining you are verbalizing something that's not confession if you are arguing the Bible says do everything without complaining nor argument. All of them require speech. They require utterance. They require speaking. But the difference is that confession, the best description of confession is what happened to Ezekiel in chapter 37. 
son of man can these bones live he said only thou knowest and then he says prophesy declare as you have heard and he says i prophesied as i was commanded not as i desired as i was commanded i prophesied as i was commanded i prophesied as i was commanded so the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so not just think so let the blessed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so let the prosperous of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so let the victorious of the lord say so let the favored of the lord say so confession psalm 107 and verse 2 Please give it to us. Psalm 107 and verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom the Lord had redeemed already from the hand of the enemy. They have been redeemed already. But they have to say so to walk in the reality of that redemption. So I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. I am the head and not the tail. I am confessing why because he said so in the name of Jesus Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising for my shame I receive double where I've been deserted so that no man walks through me I become an ex a eternal excellency a joy of many generations I arise and I shine for my light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me these are not mere words I am giving life to that which was finished in Christ I am activating it you see brothers and sisters please look up this kingdom was designed to be voice activated this is powerful Genesis 1 verse 1 the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth verse 2 says now the earth was dark it was void it was formless and the spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters you would think just because of the presence of the Holy Spirit creation should happen nothing happened until we get to verse 3 and Elohim said light be light be Elohim said light be and the Bible says and there was light everything he said he saw everything he said he saw when he created Adam in his image and his likeness the Bible says and whatsoever things Adam called them that was the name thereof that means it is unto you the way you call it if you call it trouble it must obey what you have said if you call it disappointment it must be for you as you have said is it not in your Bible that when men say there is a casting down it tells you immediately that you are not an ordinary person it, when men say there is a casting down your report let me tell you this a lie is not an incorrect statement alone a lie is anything God did not say the standard definition of a lie is anything God did not say not just a statement that is incorrect because the subject of truth has to be based on a reference those who are lawyers and those who are of the judicial system will tell you you cannot arbitrarily say something is true or is not true there has to be a reference is that true Jesus said I am the way I am the truth that means reference every other thing based on me the word of God the logos of God so whatever God did not say oh let God be true the Bible says and every other man it didn't say and every other man evil every other man a liar so circumstances Paul was speaking and he said there is as it were many voices in the earth and none of them is without significance your circumstances have a voice your limitations have a voice your yesterday has a voice are we together now and all these voices continue to speak and make noise you are going to have to choose you this day not just who you will serve but what voice you would hear the first thing that led to the fall of man was exposing himself to a voice that God did not recommend the Bible says in Genesis 3 when you begin to read from verse 8 it says and God came they had the voice of God walking in the cool of the day the original Hebrew rendition is they had the talking spirit walking in the cool of the day 
and he says Adam where art thou and Adam said I heard your voice but I hid because I was naked the next question who told you you have exposed yourself to an influence that is a lie listen we live in times where you must be very intentional about the voice that frames your understanding please hear me let me repeat myself it is important if you desire to walk in victory you desire to see the reality of the victory that is in the Christ manifest in your life your ministry your finances every aspect of your life you must be very intentional as to what voice you expose yourself to because the voice you expose yourself to you have given authorization to to shape your belief system and the Bible says as he thinketh in his heart interchange for mind he didn't say so he will become so is he already I can predict your future by the influence you have submitted yourself to I don't have to be a prophet I just need to see what is building your mind what is building your understanding and I can guarantee with digital precision that this is the kind of future you will have. For my Bible says, he that walks with the wise, he does not have to be wise. Just walk with the wise. It says, he that walks with the wise will be wise himself. But a companion of fools, no matter how well-meaning, shall be destroyed. Is God blessing us this morning? We're dealing with confession, the power of confession. Two more scriptures. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Isaiah 43, please give it to us, help us media, and verse 26. Read with me if you can see it projected. I pray you are able to see it. If you are, then let's read together. Ready? Read. Put me in remembrance, he says. Let us plead together. Then he says, declare thou that thou mightest be justified. Don't hope you will be justified. Declare down. What have I told you that is responsible? On what basis should I lift you? On what basis should I honor you? On what basis should your church grow? Oh, I'm a well-meaning believer. That's a lie because that's not the basis for growth. Everything you have is routed through the office of the Christ. When you dislodge him from the equation, you have no basis for receiving anything. You must plead your case, declare down. In Isaiah chapter 38, don't turn there, just write. Prophet Isaiah comes to Hezekiah and says, Hey, yes, I bring you a word from the Lord. Set your house in order, you will not recover from this sickness. Hezekiah said, I respect you, I respect your office. You have a nice day. The Bible says he turned his face to the wall and pleaded his case. There is a judicial system in this universe and you must understand the art of spiritual legislation. You must know how to stand and plead your case in destiny. Otherwise, you will fail. You will keep complaining while you fail. Believe me. There are many believers who allow things to just happen. No. There is a judicial system. On what basis should I extend your life? And Hezekiah said, remember. There is a book in heaven called the book of remembrance. Lord, is this how you reward those who diligently walk with you? Did you not say I have the power to choose life? Where is it in the archives of heaven that I chose death? And God said, ah, 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 this man is putting pressure on my integrity. Yes, Isaiah, go back. Forget about your ego. Go back. Even though I am the Lord that changed not, I respect and exalt myself above my word. Can I tell you this? The highest dimension of prophecy is the prophecy of scripture. That no matter what is said or not said, you can take the prophecy of scripture and stand with spiritual understanding. Please hear me. You will never get anything by default in this life. Aside from that which comes based on the law of time and chance. If you must be intentional about producing results, you must know how to plead your case. Oh God, what would you give me seeing that I go childless? All right, here is someone from my house. At least let me have a seat. And he said, no. Abraham, you will have your own child. Abraham believed God and the Bible says it was credited unto him 
for righteousness. So we like faithful Abraham, we believe God. We believe God. Someone shout, I believe God. One more time, shout it, I believe God. So when you go to God, you don't pray some of these sympathetic but destructive prayers. Lord, is this how you're going to allow my life? You mean you are in heaven, you have the eyes that see and you're watching me like this. It looks, that's just, of course, God is merciful and he's loving. But let me tell you sincerely, if it's a parliament of heaven, you must know how to stand. Satan, on what basis are you attacking my family? The Bible declares that I will serve the Lord and he will bless me. I am a faithful worker in this ministry. And Lord, I stand, I lift my service like my, my badge, my authorization for safety and the blessing. This is how to plead your cause. Hallelujah. In one minute while you are seated, I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare everything you know the word of God has said over you. Don't say this is some childish thing. Many people have ignored this principle to the detriment of their life, their success, and their destiny. Lift your voice and please pray. Confession. Present your case before the God of the Bible. Very quickly, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now the fourth, the fourth step is your action of obedience. Not just mere action, your action of obedience. This is the zenith of your manifesting faith, your action of obedience. All of those support systems build your conviction to the point where you are ready to act. Your action of obedience. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Let me quote it quickly for time's sake. The Bible says, And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do, to observe and to do, to observe and to do, not just to see and to be aware, to observe and to do all that I command you this day, uh -huh, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you the condition if thou will hearken to the voice of the lord to observe and to do faith is not just what saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said are we together faith is doing what god has said joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 popular scripture joshua was a timid young man who was now receiving such responsibility he was afraid god had to encourage him to say look moses my servant is dead now the mantle is upon you you're going to lead these people onward and he was so afraid he knew they were stiff-necked people he knew that the cities that before them that were before them were very terrible and great cities and god gave him a formula that is applicable unto us the book of the law this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night to the end that thou mayest observe to do again we see that repeated observe to do all that is written therein for when you do you will make your ways prosperous and you will have good success john 13 and verse 17 jesus said something very instructive while building and mentoring the disciples who would later become the apostles of the Lamb. is projected, please let's read together. Ready? One to read. If ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. It's not enough to know. You must obtain grace to do. Grace to do. The Bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience only when your obedience is complete praise the name of the lord you must do you must do there are conditions behind every promise that we desire to walk into you must find out what the condition is obtain grace from god in prayer and do and do and do hallelujah 
Two more and then we're done for this morning. Number five. Am I right? The fifth key to the faith equation is found in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. It's called thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a deep and profound mystery. Be anxious. This version says careful. It's not an accurate rendition. The real word there is to be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything, by prayer and then supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God with thanksgiving. Father, thank you. Why do you thank him? Because you believe. You believe that he has done it. The Bible declares that when we pray, this is the confidence that we have. That when we pray, he hears us. God is not an idol. When we pray, he hears us. So we thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Because I know this project is done. Thank you, Jesus. Because I received by faith this new level of grace. This new level of unction. Thank you, Jesus. Because I'm walking in this favor. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Can you in one minute whilst you're seated just say thank you, Jesus. Not just for the things past. Not just for the things past. But the things that he's bringing. Thank you, Jesus. Is someone saying thank you? Don't just thank him for what you have seen. Thank you, Jesus. Because the months that follow are months of favor and grace. With thanksgiving. Keep saying thank you. You get the glory. I just want to say thank you, you get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say thank you, so in my life, in my life, be glorified. Let me tell you this. Thanksgiving is truly powerful. Replace a life of complaining and grumbling with thanksgiving. Lord, I may not see the things you are doing, but thank you. Thank you because this is the day the Lord has made. I don't need to understand the day. I just need to find out who made it. If I know who made the day, I can tell whether my interest was represented in that day or not. The Lord, the one who so jealously loves me, made the day. So I trust that my interest was represented in this day. And I walk through the day with thanksgiving and expectation. So I'm not surprised when I'm favored. The Lord made the day. I'm not surprised when I'm lifted. The Lord made the day. I'm not surprised when doors open for me. The Lord made the day. You walk with that expectation. And continue to program very supernatural results in your life. Finally, the last key to the faith equation is called patience. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Interestingly, every time you read the Bible, especially the ministry of Jesus, there are times when you will see that certain miracles happen immediately. The Bible says immediately these happen. Immediately these happen. But there are times that the Bible would tell us like it happened in Mark 11 that when he caused the fig tree, he did everything right, yet nothing happened at that instance. Yet he didn't stand there wondering and say, Father, why embarrass me this much? No, he left. He returned the next day and the tree had withered. So it is not unusual 
for time and process to be part of our equation of faith. The Bible says, and be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise or inherit the promise. There are times it will require patience. No matter how healthy a woman is, no matter how medically and physically sound she is, she's not going to take in in one day and the child suddenly grows in one day and within 24 hours. Now, God can do all things. Are we together now? But even the prophets, when they come speaking by God, they say, according to the time of life. There are things that happen according to the time of life. If you give birth to a child, and as soon as the child is out in five minutes, he says, Mommy, how are you? Good to see you. Daddy, how is everything? Where can I eat, please? I'm, I'm really hungry. You don't know what it means to be. Now, you are going to run away from your own blessing. There are times that God allows the sequence of process to follow certain manifestations. And that happens for various reasons. Number one, because human beings usually misuse anything they are not built and educated to maintain. You have to understand why many times God allows process. Someone who has never made a million naira, never made 500,000, never had any significant level of the anointing no matter what kind of impartation you receive there are certain levels God will limit by himself for your own benefit there are certain levels of anointing that will never come on you just like that you can't stand the attacks that follow that anointing so as an act of his mercy he will gradually build you into that grace so that you will sustain the stamina to both maintain it there are anointings that when you carry it will change you Literally, your, your, it will change you physically, change your appetites, change everything about you. And that level of sudden change, you are not even ready for it. Praise the Lord. So not every manifestation of process is demonic. God is a God of speed, but he does not rush people. We need patience. A young man who is not used to managing resources, managing people, will not overnight become a leader. Over The Bible says he gave the parable of the talents. He gave one five talents, two talents, one talent. The same Lord. He says he gave them according to their several abilities. That means he had watched them for a while. He watched their belief systems. He watched their level of growth. And that informed how he gave them those talents. At the end of that story, we see that he was right. The one with the five talents had his own challenge to face. His challenge would be pride and complacency. After all, I have the highest of the talents. Yet he was diligent and he engaged those talents. It, it took an extra level of focus. The one with two talents had his own challenges to fight. Jealousy and bitter envy because there was someone above him. The ability to have stayed focused and to produce. The one with the one talent, you see why he got only one. It tells you it was even just mercy that gave him that one. Because at the end of the story, you see that the giver was right. He was already a bitter person. He was already a failure from beginning. He said, I know you. You are a hard man. You like reaping where you did not sow. So I thought instead of wasting your time, let me bury it. You bury seeds, not talents. You multiply talents and you sow seeds. He took a talent and he was doing what seeds should do. Are we blessed? You need patience. Let me tell you this. I submit to us that impatience can cheat. Every time you are not patient, you will give birth to the Ishmael that will fight you. Listen to this. Oh, Abraham and Sarah, every time you become impatient, prepare. Ishmael is coming that will cause you trouble for the rest of your life. You must be patient so that you will not give birth to what will become your unbecoming. There are many people today, you see, if God says I'm going to give you one million next week, 
Satan will give you 200 naira now. 200,000 right now. You say, why wait for 1 million of next week? I can give you 200,000 cash. And you will think and say next week, a bed in hand, they say, is what, uh, I can't remember what that thing is, what two or five in the bush. No. Follow them who through faith. Is that not what Satan, Satan is a mass, you see, Satan is a businessman. He knows how to negotiate. From the instance, Jesus had not even started his ministry. He waited patiently for the son of the living God to fast for 40 days. And here he came. Jesus, let's talk. First, you are hungry. Turn this stone into bread. And he said, it is written. Then he said, all right, I know. Let me take you to an exceeding high mountain. You just fall down. Is it not written in scripture that he will put his angels charge over you? They will guard you on their wings and they will insist that you don't dash your foot against a stone. Satan negotiated. And then finally, the Bible says he took him into, not on top, into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world from that mountain. That mountain was not just a physical mountain. He took him into a sphere and a realm and showed him all the captains of industry, business, and said, all these people, I place them there. I'm like a godfather. The keys is here with me. Just bow down to me. Why go through the rigor of the cross? Why add three and a half years of pain and misery, preaching and doing evangelism, recruiting stubborn disciples who will probably betray you tomorrow, going through the cross, feeding the 5,000. Let me save you that journey. Just bow to me. This is what you want to collect. Bow to me. And Jesus said, depart from me. And he left him. I can imagine what happened when he met him again in hell. Satan, three years ago we met. Now I'm with you. Give me the keys. Now I can collect the keys legally. You offered me the keys. But if I received it, there would not be blood. There would not be death. There would not be the cross. I couldn't have died as a curse. Because the mosaic, the, the, the mosaic law says that it has to be death on a tree to make you a curse. So if he died but not on a tree. There's no way he would have become sin for us. The Bible says what is written, cursed is he that hanged on a tree that the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, will come upon us, the Gentiles, to the end that we may receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. We must learn to wait. Nigerians, we must learn to wait. God is a God that can bless people, but let's be careful with our idea of sharp, sharp. Many people have been destroyed today. Do you know that when you rush, while you are suffering the consequence of rushing, someone who is following process will still come and pass you. While you are there, managing the pain of rushing can be destructive. It is a, it is a, a greater time waster. We will wait. For in his presence there's fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the Lord. Now look up, please. What has God told you from Scripture? Have you meditated upon it? Have you prayed? Have you confessed it with faith in your heart? Are we together? Have you obtained grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for that manifestation? Obedience is very powerful. If yes, have you given thanks in advance knowing that God is not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent, and haven't done all are you standing patiently waiting? Patiently waiting. Patiently waiting. All the days of my appointed time, he said, I will wait until my change comes. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait 
until my child comes until my land comes until my influence comes the bible says and john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing let me speak to someone listen to me there is always a season of appearing for anyone do you know if you force a door to open even if it's not time it will open but if that door opens it can kill you have you seen people try to pluck mango from a tree we're wrapping up when it is not time when that mango is not ripe, see the effort it takes you can stone and hit someone's car and go to police station simply because you were not patient for sometimes one more month it's difficult to pluck a fruit that is not yet ripe the effort but how many of you have mangoes around you when it is time in the night you think it's raining <laughs> everything is coming down and you wake up in the morning to prepare blessings that's what happens when seasons come God is speaking to someone faith is not foolishness I must balance this we live in a generation that prides itself in excessive hurry and rush I need to show people that I'm the youngest millionaire I need to show people that I'm the most vibrant man of God at 15. I need to do this. I need to buy the best car. Sometimes not every open door is anointed. You have to be discerning. When Satan wants to destroy you, sometimes he can give you visa. And off you go out of the will of God into perdition. We must sustain the maturity and the discernment to discern doors and discern opportunities. Can we pray this morning? Please rise up on your feet. We will win for in his presence there's fullness of joy and our strength we will score as we have just two three minutes this morning sadly I'm not sure that I may have the time to pray for people as I intended to because there are other sessions and we must respect it however please I'd like you to give me a minute or two I just feel stirred in my heart to make an altar call I believe with all my heart altar calls are not funeral services altar calls are not times when weak and unsuccessful people just come to hand over their mess to Jesus no an altar call is the noblest decision that any man can make under heaven. In all you're getting, the Bible declares that if our hope is only in this life, it says we're of all men most miserable. There are men and there are women here, young and old alike, whilst listening to me teach on the subject of faith. How can you believe on one who you do not know? Here's what Apostle John said. This is the record that God has given us eternal life, he said. But he structured the administration of this life in such a way and a manner that this life only comes through his son. So it is he that hath the son that hath life. Being in church does not make you saved. Believe me. Being around spiritual things, being a worker, carrying a Christian name does not save you. For there is no name given unto men. If you worship the four living creatures, it's still idolatry. If you worship the throne, it's still idolatry. If you worship heaven, it's still idolatry. There is an object that represents the administration of the life of God. He is Jesus, the son of the living God. I want to make a call right now. Two sets of people all at once. Those who are saying, Apostle, if you will give me this opportunity in this conference, I want to finally win that war and stand boldly to make a decision for Jesus. Others who are saying, I love Jesus and I've worked with him, but at some point my life has gone haywire and I'm trusting for renewal. We have just one minute wherever you are. Don't wait for someone to be the first. Be bold, win that war, come and stand here. Let's celebrate them as they come. I'll count one to five. Run like there's fire on the mountain. One. Lord, I give you my heart. Two. Please rush, come, come and stand. Don't be ashamed. God bless you. Keep coming. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided.
look at me my dear brothers and sisters I salute you it takes a lot of courage to come and stand before the people of God but Jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men he declares that I'll be ashamed of you before my father it is a very noble decision to stand before Jesus and I want you to pray this prayer let it be from the depth of your heart this is not some religious thing this is not even a conference issue this is about your destiny with Jesus you can find peace that surpasses all understanding. Can I tell you, no matter what has happened in your life, I do not care. No man condemns you. You're standing before the one who loves you so much. He declared, I have loved you with an everlasting love. He said, and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. God is able and willing to give you a new beginning. So as I lead you to pray, I like you to pray it passionately. You're not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Please lift your right hand high to heaven. Lift your right hand high to heaven. Say this after me. Say it from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I believe that you are the son of God. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life savior of my soul king of my destiny I receive eternal life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life the power of sin the power of Satan the power of the grave is broken over my life from today I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep your hands lifted your majesty we present to you the ones you died for it's an honor to watch this my dear brothers and sisters come to Jesus for the Bible declares that whoever will come to you you will in no wise cast away I pray that according to their declarations and according to the authority of Scripture I declare your sins forgiven I declare the administration of eternal life to your spirit in the name of Jesus from today and forever you walk victoriously in the name of Jesus may God find worthy vessels in your life and I pray that you will do wonders with the life God has given you the Lord bless you the Lord keep you I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you be built and you be established in righteousness in Jesus name we pray Amen and amen. God bless you. Now, please, this is what I want you to do. There's a brother waving his hands there. All of you together in concert. I just want you, whilst we're appreciating them, I want you to follow that gentleman. They will lead you to a room. They'll just have a word with you and you'll be back. Can we appreciate them? Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Before I take my seat, I really want to use this opportunity to say thank you again. Um, Apostle Chidume, thank you. Your wife, thank you. And the entire church, thank you for this opportunity. And then finally, to just speak over our lives. Is that all right? I decree and declare, even though we didn't have the time to pray, God will create another opportunity for us. But I speak over your life. Everything that has defied the word of God over your life, I stand and I release my faith with you. In the name of Jesus, before the end of this month, may your eyes see signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the Spirit that God will raise men and women who will stand by you and stand for you and see to it that the purposes of God come to pass in your life even in this season. 
I plant in you by the Spirit hunger for spiritual things. May your prayer life come alive in Jesus' name. May your word study life come alive in Jesus' name. I take away any and all forms of distraction from your life and your destiny. And I decree and declare the grace to passionately pursue your destiny. May that grace come upon you. Hear me, everything that has refused to work in your life, I declare by the spirit of grace from tonight and after this conference, let it begin to work supernaturally. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that you go from glory to glory. You go from grace to grace. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.